Well, he played one of the lovable bad boys of Summer Bay, and since then, Dan Ewing's star has been rising, on track to become yet another one of our big Aussie exports into Hollywood. In just a couple of weeks, we'll be seeing him on Netflix alongside some very big names. And guess what? He joins us now. Dan Ewing, welcome to the Ange Rob and Robbo Show. Now, mate, I know you've got a very successful show on your hands, but I'm telling you, you could be my agent if you want. That was fantastic. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> Dan, I've got to say, I have become friends with you over social media, and I just love the kind of guy you are. You are very down to earth. You are very much uh, a people person. Uh, so obviously the, the stardom that you've experienced hasn't affected you yet. Mate, I'm just a Muppet from the Northern Beaches. Uh, I still kind of wake up and, and, and think, uh, am I, is this my job? Is, am I, do, I paid, do I get paid to, to shoot at aliens and to play rugby players and, and all this stuff? It's, uh, I, I, I'm still waiting to wake up from the dream, that's for sure. I don't just say that. I know it's a very cliche thing, actor thing to say, but it really is true. Well, Dan, Heath Braxton was such a beloved character on Home and Away. Everyone loved the River Boys. I mean, they were written about in the tabloids all the the time in in magazines tv week and you even revived the role a few times most recently just this year i've got to ask though what was the decision like to leave such a popular show i'm so glad you say and a big shout out to everybody who likes to say g'day or uh, take photos of me while i'm eating salt and pepper calamari i still don't know <laughs> how to make that. I look good um it was like any job i think um First and foremost, I'm so grateful for the opportunity. Um, I think they do an amazing job, that show. And I don't know if a lot of the uh, the thespians that come off there really feel it until you leave. Um, I digress, though. Uh, to, to leave that show, I, obviously, like, I'm, I'm an ambitious young man, but I, I, I've got a never-say-never never attitude about that show. If the, I'm, a, I'm a stickler for good narrative and good story, I'm not just going to go back there for a ratings boost. And it's simple as that. If the story is there, Heath Braxton will be. That, that's for sure. Oh, that's really interesting, mate, because you achieved a lot of success through Home and Away, including nominations for multiple Logies and Actor Awards. Was it a challenge to break away from that role and really have people see you as your own person rather than an actor on that show? I, Rob, that is such a great question, mate. Um, I mean, obviously, people call you by your character name in like the supermarket sometimes. I don't think that's just because people think I am Heath. I'm, I'm sure some people do, and that's okay. We love all, all types. Um, I... Um, I, I made a conscious decision to, to break out in a way that is a little bit different to what a lot of actors would do. I went and did a role that might not have been what people would associate with me. It was a short film called Factory Hands. I portrayed mm. American photographer Lewis Hine. Now, in real life, he was a lot smaller than me. He spoke with a really fantastic Midwestern accent. But it was just an opportunity to get rid of the bodies, do you know? And just to sort of, like, Heath will always be a part of me um, where similar in some ways, very dissimilar in others. Uh, but uh, yeah, I just, I, 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 I pretty much picked the opposite end of the spectrum and just put, went head first into that. Great question. <laughs> well, Great I'm question. glad you approve of the questions. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, you were on Dancing with the Stars in 2021, in 2011, sorry, and it, it is back. Were you approached for this all-star version special? And if not, why not? And would you have said yes? <laughs> You know how I said the last question was good, Rob? I, I've been thinking, I mean, like, Channel 7, I, I, I love them. But what a pack of, like, to not call me <gasps> the, best de the best dancer they've ever had on that show? <laughs> Let's have a look at some of that dancing. Oh, Here you are. Oh, please, please don't roll. Oh. <laughs> no, look, I, um, that for me was a big part of my life because it, it was a, it was, I, it was really was. Oh, 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 sorry. I'm trying to look at you, Rob. But oh, oh, that that skill, look at the, <laughs> the hips. My uh, goodness. Uh, no, look, it was because I, I had like sort of two left feet uh, on anything that wasn't the basketball court. I certainly couldn't hear music, and it just gave me a newfound respect for 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 uh, uh, dancers. For for, for musicians, for performing artists on that on that other side, it was an absolutely fantastic experience. But no, they did not call me Rob. <laughs> better, 
Do you they know didn't even sign into my DMs, you know? Come on. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we'll talk to Angus Ross, the head of programming at Seven, about it. Yeah, um, maybe you can be a wild card, even though I think they've pretty much already shot it. But anyway, you never know. <laughs> well, look, you were also recently in Occupation Rainfall, and I'm really intrigued by this. Uh, you played the role of Simmons. We spoke to Luke Spark, the director, at the beginning of the year, and talked to him about the difference between filmmaking in Australia and the US. Do you feel like that gap is changing? Because this production was like nothing I've ever seen in Australia. It was more ambitious and big picture. Is that starting to happen with Australian productions? Give Luke Spark a Star Wars movie. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yes. and, um, I think what people need to realise about that film was it was 25 million Australian. And what's that in the with the current exchange rate? Say 17 uh, uh, US. So I just think what he accomplished in that movie, when I say he's a visionary, it's, it's I, I'm not kidding at all. Um, I think it's quite interesting. It can be a double-edged sword. And not, not a lot of actors will say this. With all the, the big uh, production companies and studios that are coming here, it's fantastic. It is absolutely fantastic, especially for, for crews and the economy. On an acting standpoint, it's not like they're offering you a lot of American money a lot of the time. So on that side of the coin, there is that, that thing where it's like, yeah, but it's there are considerations to be made. And don't get me wrong, working on those sorts of things is fantastic, but you do have to consider that as an actor. You know what I mean? And I, yeah. I know that might be a taboo thing. Not a lot of actors will talk about it, but there is that thing where they still want to get you for those local rates and it's about understanding your value and and, uh, and holding that value if you think that you're at that level. Oh, good on you. I like that. Um, look, your most recent project, Love and Monsters, is coming to Netflix in just a couple of weeks, and it has a pretty huge international cast, including Dylan O'Brien, Jessica Henwick, and Michael Rooker. Is working on those big budget international films where you see your career headed, and I, for one, certainly hope it will be. Well, first of all, thank you so much for the the compliment. Yeah, it's oh mate, it, it's it's so fun. It is really fun. Look, and obviously, you know, we love what we do in Australian film, and I think what Australian films and and um, and what television is trying to push more in towards is, um, is is that sort of neck of the woods. But we're so good at character work, I think, because we have less money for the explosions and the the monsters in this sort of thing. Um, but it's a, it's a it's a really exciting time working with those guys, working with the bigger toys. And, this, and actors that you've watched on these huge Marvel movies, etc. Um, well, I can't say a lot, but it is certainly where my career is headed. Really, yeah. And look, the movie was meant to have a theatrical release, but because of COVID, we'll be going straight to Netflix instead. Is that disappointing as an actor, or do you see it as an opportunity for more people to be able to view your work? You know, uh, how many people? A hundred million or something? Two hundred million are watching Netflix mm. now. It is one of the biggest platforms you can possibly be on. Mm. Well, when things like that happen, I like to sort of, I like to be educated. So 21 Laps is behind this film. So 21 Laps is a huge production company run by Sean Levy. Um, Stranger Things is a quite an iconic program of theirs, a program, show. Just of a there. little one. Um, <laughs> so with Love and Monsters, they were quite tactical and, and, and what they did was very interesting. So Paramount released it in the US to VOD. So for everybody at home, that's video on demand. So it's a $25 US ticket. So you could almost pay that per person to, going to a cinema yeah. so they had a big release over there and then i think internationally they've gone down this path of of netflix but you see what's happening with with warner brothers and hbo and all that sort of stuff so it really is not to use a, a popular term a, a fluid situation um yeah. but i think paramount did extremely well with it and i'm very i can't lie i'm very excited to see uh to for my friends family everybody here to see love and monsters it's, it's great fun it knows what it is uh it's a very very fun movie I can't wait to see it. I'm genuinely excited. And, mate, I've got to say, congratulations on all your success. I really love success stories, and you deserve all the success. You've been very supportive of uh, this show and TV Black Box, and I really do appreciate it, mate. You are a true gentleman. Mate, thank you so much. And simple as this, I don't just support anybody. I really love programs that maybe, that I won't say disruptive, but who aren't afraid to, to talk about things or have conversations that maybe aren't exactly on the network trajectory. And that's not yeah. to, to pull down networks because they have a great job. Uh, they do a great job and they service a particular market. But Absolutely. I don't see the Australian market advancing without people like you and what you guys do on Black Box. So that's why I put my spot behind it. Oh, mate, thank you very much. Well, you can check out Dan Ewing in 
Love and Monsters on Netflix on April 14th. Dan, I cannot wait to see what you do next. Genuinely, thank you for coming on the Andrew and Robbo Show. Thanks, mate. Talk to you soon.